My name is Dominic Palazzolo and I'm the owner of Marvelous Molds and today I'd like to show you my new invention that I think is going to revolutionize cake decorating as we know it. This idea came to me after I watched a demonstration where a stencil was being used with royal icing in order to add a decoration to the side of a cake. And what I found was that this process is difficult to perform and a lot of times it doesn't really leave a nice decoration with clean edges and, and nice clean cut designs. And what I found is that it's a difficult process to perform and the royal icing is kind of sticky and it leaves a non-distinct design on the side of the cake and you really have kind of like one shot to do it perfect. And so what I did was I thought if there could be a better way to decorate cakes and I came up with this which is basically what I call a silicone onlay. Now this is just a very thin sheet of silicone and if you look at the surface, what I've done is I've created a pattern by having these blades of silicone come out of the surface. Now, here's the way it works. It's quite easy to use. One of the first things that you need to know is that you want to season the onlay before you use it. And typically we use cornstarch. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to liberally apply cornstarch to the onlay. Now, it's important that you don't have a whole lot of cornstarch on the onlay like you see here. And what I like to do is just kind of knock it out of there. What I like to say is, is that you should have a one molecule thick coating of cornstarch on your onlay before you use it. So especially when the onlays are new, this is very important. And now that gives you an idea. You can see that it's very lightly dusted. And that gives you an idea of how you want the onlay to look before we apply some fondant on top. Now, let me tell you something about fondant that you should know. The manufacturers all around the world make fondant so that you can roll it out and you can put it over cakes. Fondant isn't made for molding or to be used in an onlay as far as its consistency. So you may find that the fondant that you make or that you pull right out of a bucket might be too tacky, too soft to be molded or used in an onlay properly. So you want to condition your fondant perhaps before you use it with your onlay. And I typically incorporate some Tylose powder or CMC. I also might uh, work in um, some uh, powdered sugar in order to firm the fondant and give it some body. So once you've conditioned your fondant and you have your onlay coated with a very thin coating of cornstarch, you can then take your sheeted fondant and you lay it right on top of the onlay just like that. And then I'm going to press it down with my fingers into the design. So what I'm going to do is just put a little cornstarch on here to take out the tackiness. And now I'm just going to take a rolling pin and I'm just going to roll over the top of the fondant and it's just a light back and forth motion. And what happens is, is that these blades that are made out of silicone that won't cut your skin do an amazing job on fondant. So as you can see, the blades cut through from the bottom. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the excess around the outside of the design. And 
What we have to do now is apply an adhesive. Now, the adhesive that we're using is basically 3 quarters corn syrup, 1 quarter water. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to paint it right on the surface here, just like that. And what this does is it acts like a glue. And it is going to enable my design to transfer and adhere to the side of the cake. But I'm going to show you that. I, I think you're going to be very surprised how well this works. Now, once we have the entire surface covered with our fondant glue, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove portions of this pattern that I don't want on my cake. So I'm deciding that what I want to do is I want to go with the lattice. This is a Moroccan lattice. And so what I'm going to do, as you can see, is I'm simply going to remove the centers of the design. And what remains is the Moroccan lattice, which is actually what is going to be put onto the cake. Once I have all of the centers removed, I'm left with the pattern that I want to put on my cake. Now, if I wanted to, I could just keep the centers in and take the lattice out. And that gives you a whole nother effect, which is very, very beautiful on a cake. But I want to put the lattice on for you in this demonstration. One of the great advantages of a silicone onlay is that it's made out of silicone, so it's stretchy and flexible. What that means is before I attempt to put this complicated pattern on a cake, what I can do is I can actually stretch the mold, and that loosens the fondant that is inside the onlay. So as you notice, I'm pulling in different directions. Now, I just want to mention that this can be gum paste, this can be modeling chocolate, this can be marzipan. All these different mixtures work. You can even take it to a rolling pin handle and roll it like this and get that really nice angle where you're bending the onlay. So I can tell that this is just ready to go right on my cake. OK, so we've come to that part of this demonstration for the unveiling. This is the climax. I, I know some of you think this may not work. But as you can see, even though I've loosened the fondant inside the onlay, I can hold it vertically. Now, this is really important, you see, because now what I can do is I can take this and I can bring it to my cake. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left side and I'm just going to kind of, I'm not going to worry about putting the whole onlay on the cake at one time, OK? I just want this left side to go on, be straight up, and level with my cake board. And then what I'm going to do is just come around without stretching it. And I'm just going to lay it right on the cake. Now, we want to push on the outside of the onlay and actually kind of rub and massage the onlay. And what I want you to remember is I want you to feel through the silicone and you can feel that design. OK? You can feel that Moroccan lattice. And when you feel it, you push it so that you get really great contact. And then there is an unmolding lip that you can grab. And what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to take my onlay off. And because we applied that adhesive, what's going to happen is, is that it's going to transfer from the onlay right on to the cake. One of the best things about a silicone onlay is that I designed all of them so that you can put them end to end 
so that you can have a seamless continuation and design around an entire cake. So what I've got here is I've got the last onlay and I'm going to take it off and I'm going to show you what an entire cake looks like with this Moroccan lattice and I think it's going to be quite hard for you to tell where we stopped and where we finished on this cake. Every silicone onlay is made to the length of two times pi. That is 6.28 inches long. Why is this important? Well, pi is a component of the circumference of a circle, and by making each onlay two pi long, they will seamlessly cover the sides of any even diameter cake without overlapping. For instance, a six inch diameter cake will take three onlay applications to completely cover its side. An eight inch will take four, a 10 will take five, and so on and so on. Any size cake can be completely and seamlessly covered as long as it's an even diameter. I want to share with you right now one of the most important things you should know when working with a silicone onlay. Again, if we look at a silicone onlay, it's basically a sheet of silicone and we have a, a pattern of blades that rise out of that surface. And what you should know is that we need our fondant or our gum paste to be the same thickness as the blades are high, okay? Now, one of the best ways that we can do that is to use a pasta machine or a pasta attachment to your KitchenAid. And I know a lot of you probably have this arrangement. Uh, you know, a normal pasta machine works really well or anything that is, you know, meant to sheet dough or fondant works well. And basically what we'll do is we will just take, here I have fondant and I've just rolled it thin enough so I can put it through the pasta attachment on this KitchenAid. Now, what I've done is I've opened up the rollers all the way and I'm going to start it and I'm going to pass this through and I want you to know that on this pasta attachment, this KitchenAid pasta attachment, normally sh uh, rolling it out or sheeting it through to a setting of number two will give you the proper thickness uh, to work very, very well with a silicone onlay. So let's just get into that right now. I'm just going to turn this on. And I'm just going to make my initial pass right through it. And then I'm going to set it to number one. And I'm going to pass that through again. And then I'm going to set it to number two. And we'll just let that go right through. It does a really nice job. What I recommend is that you run it through twice on setting number two. What that does is it just makes sure that you have the proper thickness. Now, if I cut a little piece from this rolled out fondant and I put it next to the blade on my onlay, what I will find is, is that the fondant is exactly the same height as the blade. So when you put it over or on top of the blade and then you roll it, there is, it's not so thick and that's how you get the blade to cut through the fondant and you will be able to remove the centers and do everything that I've already shown you. So, 
rolling out your fondant or your gum paste or whatever you're using to the proper thickness is probably the most important basic principle you want to keep in mind when working successfully with the silicone onlays. We've come to a special segment in this demonstration. What I have here is a buttercream iced cake. In this demonstration up to now, I've been using fondant decorations on fondant covered cakes, but what I want you to know is that this onlay works just as well on a buttercream iced cake. Now that's really important because I think still in the United States at least, most people prefer buttercream over fondant. But this gives you the opportunity to apply a really beautiful design onto a buttercream cake using fondant. So what we're going to do is I have this damask pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply it to the buttercream cake for you just to show you how well that works. Now, what's important is to let your buttercream skin. Let it sit out and develop a nice skin before you apply the silicone onlay to it. It's an even better idea to refrigerate it and firm up the buttercream. Once we have rubbed the outside of the onlay, and we, you can see how it's just really ready to come off. We can just grab the unmolding lip and start it. And we can pull this back just like before. And there we have it. A beautiful, clean cut, perfectly defined damask pattern made of fondant and applied onto a buttercream cake. So those of you who really like to work in buttercream, this is a way where you can do things with fondant that you can't do with buttercream and really come out with a cake that's just gonna blow your customers or your friends and relatives away. So far in this demonstration, I have been using the matte-sized onlays. But what I wanna show you are what I call ribbon onlays. Now, the ribbon onlay is smaller and it lends itself very well for decorating a cake with ribbon-like decorations. Or you can also use these for borders on the bottom or the top of a cake. Think about it this way. Think about a present that's wrapped. Um, we have the wrapping paper. So the full-size mat onlay does something like that to a cake. And then to finish off a package, what you have are the ribbons, which is exactly why I designed these. Now, they work exactly the same way as the silicone onlays. And what I want to do right now is just show you the various styles that are available. So I have here a sheet of fondant and we have pre-applied the ribbons. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull these off just to give you a good idea of the designs that are available. So this one is called Double Diamond. And let's see what we've got here. This one is called Roundabout. And then this one is called Lovely Links. And we've got this one, which I call Ooh La La. This is a really pretty ribbon, and that is called Regalia. Now, I don't know if you've noticed it, but everywhere in the fashion world and cake and, and just everywhere, chevrons have become very, very popular. And so these next three ribbon onlays are basically a small chevron, a medium chevron, and a large chevron. 
very, very difficult to cut these uniformly. And the silica, the, the uh, ribbon onlays or the matte onlays do an excellent job of putting down a chevron pattern with real precision. Now we've come to the favorite part of my demonstration. Um, I'm very excited about this segment because what I'm going to show you is how you can make a standing sugar cake crown with the silicone onlays. So this is made with the scalloped lattice onlay. And what I want to show you is a method that you can use in order to make these, these beautiful cages or lattices that you can use on your cakes, like for cake separators um, and all kinds of decorative uh, embellishments on a cake. So basically what I have here is I've, I've already prepared and prepped the, I'm using gum paste right now, and I've taken the centers out of the silicone onlay. And what I have here is basically a six inch cake dummy, but I've covered it in this purple paper so that we could have a nice contrast. When I put the gum paste down on the cake dummy, you'll be able to see it really well. So when we do this, it's a little different than applying it on the cake. When we apply it on the cake, we put an adhesive, the, the water and corn syrup, and that goes a long way in being able to pull the design from the silicone onlay onto the surface of the cake. But in this instance, we're not going to be using an adhesive at all. So what I want you to do is I want you to use the flexibility of the silicone in order to loosen the gum paste that's in the onlay, okay? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to put this over this curved surface and I don't want it to get hung up in the onlay. I would really like it to come out easily so that this, this lattice pattern is not distorted. So what you can do is you can stretch it in either direction. And you can also rub your finger underneath and make it curve over the tip of your finger. You'll see how the edges of the scallops are lifting out of the, of the onlay. And so we can tell that it's really ready to pop out of there. And so you want to kind of romance it and, and coax it so that it's going to come out easily. So we're going to, when we feel like we're ready, we're going to take the onlay and we're going to line it up on top of the cake dummy. And then what we want to do is we want to just peel it back. And I'm just using my finger to, to hold it down while I pull it back. Okay, now I've got it on my cake dummy and I'm using this needle tool just to get it all centered. Okay, so we're not done yet. I want to show you some important things that you need to do which will help you assemble the, the cake crown. First of all, I'm going to take a board and I'm going to put it up on the bottom just to make sure that all the points of the onlay are level across the bottom and I do that on the top also just to make sure that my two sides are even and what I have here is just a dried gum paste scallop lattice that I just laid flat and dried it. Now what I do is I take it and I put it and line it up with the end of the 
fresh gum paste lattice on my cake dummy. And I want to make sure that when I bring this dried template up against it, that I get a good joining, okay? That the sides line up, okay? So I'm very happy with the way this is turning out. And normally what I'll do is I'll let this sit overnight and it will dry in this curved shape. And what you end up with is this type of arched lattice. And in order to make a six inch diameter, I need three of these. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take them out and stand them up on their edges just like that. Now, we take these panels, and we bring them together, bring the ends together. Now, I want you to know that more often than not, you're not going to get the absolute most precise alignment, but they're going to be close enough for you to be able to attach these panels together and make a very impressive cake crown. So as you can see, I just kind of bring them together and I check one last time to make sure that they line up very nicely. Okay? And so these do and I think that I've got a really nice cake crown here. So let me remove one of these panels and I'm going to show you how we put this together. Okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the panels end to end. And then in this piping bag, I just have some royal icing. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to be piping some royal icing right on the seam where these come together. I'm trying to do this in a way so that you can see it. But I'm piping the royal icing on the inside. And then I come in there with my finger and I just kind of press it in there. Now, what I'll do is I will also do the front side. Once I have a little royal icing on it, it's easy to keep it together. And then I'm just going to put a bead of royal icing on the front. And then I'm just going to smooth it out however you do it. I, I like, just like to use my fingers. And I'll just smooth it out. And then I'm going to let this royal icing you know, do its thing, which is basically, this is, you know, a cake decorator's glue, and it will harden. And I will simply do the same thing with this panel. And once we do that, and we allow the royal icing to dry, we end up with this beautiful cake crown. And it's very, very strong. And you can use this as a uh, decorative cake separator between two layers or tiers of cakes. Um, you can do all kinds of things to really embellish and decorate your cakes, which I'm going to show you an application that we made with this crown in our next scene. So here's a cake that we made. And as you can see, we have a damask pattern on the bottom. And then what we did was we have a nice separation between the bottom and the top layer and we put our uh, gum paste cage that we made with our scallop lattice uh, onlay. And then on top what we did was we put another layer on top and if I could show you, instead of using the lattice, which 
you can see is on the scallop lattice onlay. We took the lattice off, we kept the centers in the onlay, and then we selected the kind of centers that we wanted to transfer onto the cake so we get this beautiful effect across the top. So, the silicone onlay enables you to do this type of geometric architectural sugar work that you would only see in the best competitions and you can do this day in and day out now with the cakes that you make. So if you like that cake that I was showing you, I want to take this opportunity to give you some idea of the designs that lend them themselves well to the making of these sugar cages. And so this one that you saw on the cake is called a scallop lattice. Now you in the opening of this demonstration, I had the Moroccan lattice, and you can see how pretty of a nice lattice, standing lattice that makes, which would be very, very attractive on a cake. Now, a design that you haven't seen on a cake, but is very popular, is the double wedding ring. And so what you can do is you can make a beautiful pattern with that also. All of these you would put together just like I showed you. You can make them tighter diameters by putting them around PVC pipe or you could use any size uh, cake dummy that you want in order to get this type of an effect. So you can see that they're nice and strong and it's something that you can make ahead of time and just put on a cake as you know when you're assembling it. So I really like, I, I hope you like the trick that you can perform with the onlays. Um, I think it's pretty fantastic. It's time to show you another great trick that you can do with the silicone onlays. This we call Clever Chevron. And let me show you something that you might like. I have my sheeted fondant. Now, we have these icing sheets, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this icing sheet off, and I'm going to apply that to the fondant. Once I've applied the icing sheet to the top of the fondant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down onto the silicone onlay and I'm just going to proceed as normal where I'm just going to press it down and then I'm going to roll across after I'm done rolling and I can see the top of the blades, I'm going to take the excess away. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the adhesive. Now I'm going to selectively remove different sections from my onlay. So as you can see, the process is always the same. We rolled it, we applied an adhesive. What I did was I was selective on the uh, strips that I removed from the onlay. And then we're just going to peel and reveal this kind of an effect that you can get using the icing sheets which again is another effect that would be very, very difficult to do without a silicone onlay. And I think it gives you a very striking effect, something very unique that no one has ever seen before. 
That's the use of an icing sheet with the silicone onlay in order to create this type of cake decoration. Well, I've come to the end of my demonstration. I hope you enjoyed learning about the silicone onlays. Um, I got to confide in you that I'm quite proud of them. It was an idea that uh, really took hold with me. Um, I think it represents a real innovation. Um, up till now, all we've had in order to decorate the sides of cakes in this manner were these plastic stencils and royal icing or airbrushing. And I know a lot of you feel like you never were able to get a good result. I think that this is a really great tool that will enable you, no matter what your experience or skill level is, what I, what I really want to communicate to you right now is that all you have to do is learn how to work with a silicone onlay and you'll be able to create decorations like this. And this is only the beginning. I know that once I, uh, these silicone onlays find their way out into our creative industry, that people are going to be coming up with many other ways to use this, this silicone onlay in a fashion that creates wonderful cake decorations, and I can't wait to see it. So if you're interested in acquiring or purchasing silicone onlays, they're available at my website, which is marvelousmolds.com. And if you go there, at the top of the page, you'll see a tab and it says silicone onlays. Just click on that and it'll take you to a section where we will be showing all the different designs that are available. Now, we've got about 23 or 25 designs right now, but I want you to know that we're going to be constantly adding to the collection. So if you're interested, go to MarvelousMolds.com and take a look at what we have to offer and just know that there's more designs coming.